Hey, Dan Passarelli here. It was an interesting weekend for market news. Uh, all the attention was, of course, on Silvergate Capital, which is a Silicon Valley uh, bank that lends uh, in a very niche market to startups in Silicon Valley. And, well, they went bust, and they went bust uh, really, really quick. They had a modern-day version of a bank run. I mean, it was a bank run, but... Not the kind you think of when you're watching It's a Wonderful Life where people stand in line in front of a bank, but, uh, you know, a modern-day one, and those happen a whole bunch faster. So what exactly happened? Well, look, they, they went bust, and you can read about that. So that's not the intention of this video. This intention is what are the implications for you and me? Because if you do read about it and get the details, you will see the word bailout being tossed around quite a bit. And uh, there was kind of a bailout, but it's maybe not what you expect, and it's really important to understand the details of this. So when I hear the word, uh, you know, bailout, uh, like there's a bank being bailed out, I think of all the management uh, who are at the bank and, uh, you know, shareholders all protected, but that's that's not what happened. It's the it's the holders of the of the accounts, the people who deposited money into the bank. Those accounts are safe, being guaranteed by the government, the FDIC, the Treasury, etc. But the uh, everybody else is on the chopping block, including shareholders. So if you look at a chart of Silvergate Capital, which I've got right here. You can see that that stock is down, down, down. Today, it's still down, and that's because the stock's not getting bailed out. The only reason it's not trading zero is because there could be a white knight. There could be somebody who comes in and, and, and buys it. In fact, uh, the U.S. government, as well as some departments of the bank itself, are, are looking for buyers, and those buyers are going to be able to scoop up parts of this for pennies on the dollar, and so that's why it's not trading for zero yet. My guess is it'll never uh, get to zero. Uh, they'll probably sell off parts of the company, and um, you know at some point SI will stop trading. So that being said, it's pretty important to, um, you know, to understand this really, really important difference. If you're long that stock and you're reading, oh, it's getting bailed out, the stock should come back, it should go back higher. That's probably not the case. Um, now, when I talk about who's being protected, the investors, um, it's pretty easy to think of it's a wonderful life and, you know, think of little old ladies in Iowa who had their $150 in the bank uh, being protected. And sure, there could be some of that. But uh, more likely what it is, is it's some of these big tech firms out in California who are hooked up with the bank. And not only do they borrow money there, but they keep their accounts there. Uh, Roku, for example, is one that had a lot of money deposited in SI. And let's take a look at a stock chart of Roku really quick. So there was a little bit of worry that maybe Roku could have run into trouble. And, uh, you know, today it did sort of dip down below the 50-day moving average. But because they're one of the depositors, that capacity of their business is being protected and is being insured by the FDIC and the Treasury Department. So I thought it was important to share this really uh, granular look at exactly what's happening at this moment in time. Uh, as the story unfolds, there's going to be new news and, um, you know, well, this video will become obsolete. But uh, until then, I hope that helps. This is Dan Passarelli, Trade Smart.